normal uh, sa ibang review requirements, uh, requirements sorry, requ uh, review uh, materials, manuals nila, when they have elasticity of the mind. Okay, they only have uh, elasticity of the mind, which is yung uh, price elasticity of the mind, uh, income elasticity of the mind, and cross price, price cross price elastic, elasticity of demand yun lang ang meron sila at uh, wala silang ibang ano wala silang anong tawag diyan wala silang elasticity supply so which is very important para maintindihan yung budget line or in the curve tsaka mas para mas maintindihan yung cons, uh, theory of consumption uh, theory of consumer behavior is importante yun so, ayun. Yan ang pag-usapan natin tonight is elasticity. So, it is 100% na lumalabas talaga sa board exam ang ganitong mga, eh, ganitong topic talaga. Kaya, so, be very, ano, talaga, um, tawag dyan, um, dapat uh, maging wise tayo. So, maging wise tayo sa uh, mga topic na mga question na possible na lalabas sa board exam. But, Elasticity is 100%ly lumalabas talaga yan sa board exam. Now, even if you are going to ask Ma'am Joel, Ma'am Job siguro naka-experience na niyan. So there's a lot of questions about elasticity. No, uh, mahihirapan talaga kayo sa mga tanong na usually binabato during ano, um, board uh, during board examination. Okay, so without much further ado, our discussion for tonight, it's all about elasticity. So naliyan. All right, without much further ado, let us proceed to our discussion and it is, and it is uh, yan ay elasticity. So ano nga ba ibig sabihin ng elasticity? Pag sinabi natin elasticity, ano ba nga ba yung nalalagay sa ating isipan? No? Do you have any idea of what is elasticity? No, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng elasticity, sir? From the word itself, elastic. Yan. Elasticity, di ba? Ang elastic, elastic na klase ng isang bagay ay flexible, no? Flexible. Ibig sabihin, pag sinabi mong flexible, no, kahit anong gawin mo sa kanya, no, kaya niyang mag-bend or kaya niyang um iuso, no, or makisabay sa panahon or makisabay sa anuman yung pwedeng mong gawin sa kanya. So that is being elastic. So that is what we call elasticity. That's what we call elasticity. So let us um define more uh about elasticity okay so elasticity it refers to the responsiveness okay the, it talks about the res responsiveness again refers to the responsiveness of quantity demanded or supplied or or quantity supplied okay to changes in any of the factors affect affecting them okay so what factors that affecting them especially that affected the uh, affected the elasticity or the curve of the quantity demanded or and supplied is the price. Ito talaga yung dahilan kung bakit nagkakaroon ng changes no, in the curve of the supply and demand. Okay? So that is what we call, call elasticity. No? In any factors affecting the example, ano ibig sabihin niya? Refers to the responsiveness. Ibig sabihin nagkakaroon agad ng response, automatic response, if they are changes, example, magkaroon lang ng konting changes sa price, so nagkakaroon din ng changes sa curves ng demand at supply. Okay? So it depends on the situation. If it is about demand, so demand yun. Pag about naman siya supply, so that's supply. Okay? So what are the importance of elasticity? Bakit ginagamit or bakit nagkaroon ng study ng elasticity? Okay? From the word itself, elastic, no? flexible. Lalo na pag rubber, it's flexible, it's elastic, no? It cannot be, uh, it cannot be 
uh, broken. Yan. It cannot be broken, but it can be burned. So in order to make it in inelastic, so you need to burn it. Okay, so uh, so that's what we call um, elasticity. Okay, so number one, importance of elasticity. It is very important concept in economic analysis. No, very important in the concept of Econo in economic analysis. So, hindi lang law of demand at supply ang pag-uusapan, hindi lang market equilibrium, but also in the concept of economic analysis, no, importante din yung tinatawag nating elasticity. Okay? Number two, what is the number two importance of elasticity? We have, it gives quantifiable measures. No, ba? Ano yung sabihin ng quantifiable measures? So, pag sabi mong quantifiable, ibig sabihin na bibilang, yun, uh, it measures by number, ganon. So, of the responsiveness of economic variable to changes. Oh, yon. Responsiveness. Ano being responsiveness? No, res there is a responsiveness on the changes of the, you know, quantifiable measure. Okay? Yung tawag natin na ano, uh, nabibilang or na may measure na amount. Okay? So, responsiveness doon. Example, if they are uh, um, uh, slightly increase in the price, no? So, nagkakaroon ng responsiveness doon sa economic variable. Kung uh, nagkakaroon ba ng loss sa economics, uh, sa economy, or nagkakaroon ba ng, uh, ano, uh, nagkakaroon ba ng growth or development. Ganon. So, yun lang ang patutunguhan ng ating uh, discussion. Okay? Number three, we have importance, another importance of elasticity. It is a useful indicator for producers. Yan. Who are the producers? Those suppliers okay those sellers no it is useful indicator for producers who want to have a guide okay who want to have a guide as to the likely effects of a price change to their total revenue so bakit pinag-uusapan no bakit kay sa elasticity pinag-uusapan pa natin yung mga supplier no because if they are changes in the price especially in your inputs no in your material yung mga materials na ginagamit mo to make outputs no if there are changes in the price of that raw materials or input so nagkakaroon din ng changes sa total revenue no uh, pag nagdagdag ang cost ng production so nagkakaroon din ng ng lowest or less revenue okay pag bumaba ang cost of production so there is a greater total revenue okay Next, we have importance of elasticity. Oh, lastly, the importance of elasticity, it is this, in the same manner that it gives guide to consumers as to what will happen to their total expenditures if there is a change in the price of commodities. So it talks about the demand. Yung kanina, yung useful indicator for producers, it talks about the supply, right? Ito naman, sa pinakalas na importance of elasticity, it talks about the demand. No, It talks about how the consumers will will utilize the specific budget set okay nila no if there are changes in the price of the commodity yon so example pag mataas ang presyo ko konti lang ang bibili pero pag mataas ang presyo pero pag mababa ang presyo maraming maraming bibili kasi nga um mababa mababa yung cost niya okay so that's are the important of uh, our uh, of of our discussion today. No importance of elasticity. Okay. So what are the measurement used in you know measuring the elasticity of uh, supply at demand? We have number one. It's a point elasticity measurement. Actually, there is a formula about this one. But, but, but pero hindi naman siya lumalabas sa board exam. Actually, hindi po siya lumalabas sa board exam yung kanyang computation or yung formula niya. Ano lang dapat ninyong ano uh, i, i, uh, i ano i familiarize is yung kanyang definition. Okay? When you talk about point, it only means one or single point. Isa lang. Okay? Isang po, isang point lang, isang malaking point. And that is will give you point elasticity measurement. A single point of the demand. So elasticity is measured. So yung elasticity ay naman measured by using a single point yan, of the demand curve or supply curve. A single point of the demand curve. So if this is if this is the graph here, so we are going to make a demand here. So what is that single point na minimin niya? So ibig sabihin ito. Sorry, ito. So this one, mga ganyan. So that's a single point. So that is what we call point elasticity 
measurement. Nalalaman mo if pabababa siya or pataas. Okay? So, kasi nagbabago ang point niya. Okay? Number two, measurement. We have the arc elasticity measurement, which is known as the average point. Okay? The average point, which is elasticity, is measured for two points along the demand curve or, cur or supply curve. Ano ibig sabihin yan? If this is the curve of the supply, okay, so we have two. Pag sinabi niyang two, ibig sabihin, nagkakaroon ng um, relationship between uh, the, the, uh, the former and latter point. Okay, ano ba yung former, yung dati, at saka latter, yung bago, na papalitan na. Okay, so that, that's what they call... Uh, arc elasticity measurement okay so from here just going the, the their case okay, so that they have a, a relationship to each other okay so two points that have a relationship to each other that is what they call arc elasticity measurement okay yung parang pa arc na ang forma niya yung parang ganyan letter c ganyan pa arc okay so that is what they call arc elasticity measurement. Yan yung dalawa pag point, it means one, one point, yun on. Pag arc naman, it means two points, okay? Or average point. Siya yung, maga, siya yung pinaka average, yeah, average siya, average point ang tawag sa kanya. Okay, so let's proceed now to, actually there are two types of elasticity that we are about to discuss. Actually, madami yan sila, pero mahirapan na ako mag-discuss nung iba kasi hindi naman din lumalabas dun sa board exam. Uh, that is under managerial economics already. So, ayun. So, hindi naman siya lumalabas sa board. So, ito lang yung mga, what do you call this, basics. Okay? Um, tawag dyan na lang, ha? Ito yung mga basics. Okay? Mga basics na dapat nyo alamin, which is the elasticity of demand and the elasticity of supply. So, but we are going to uh, this night discussion ng itong night na dis, uh, itong gabing discussion na to ang mas ifo-focus ko talaga is on elasticity of demand kasi ito naman ang lumalabas talaga sa board exam kasi ito yung mag ito dito din tayo okay din, din dito din tayo magfo-focus talaga din sa tinatawag nating ano um theory of the consumer behavior the theory of consumer behavior Ano ba yung behavior ng mga consumers when it comes to buying products, buying goods or services? Yun. So, that's what we are going to discuss for tonight. Okay? So, let's start first with the elasticity of demand. Tignan mo lang natin kung na-record ba siya. Tapos pagka nang, oh yes, na-recorded pala. Okay, so elasticity of demand. Pag sinabi mong elasticity of demand, uh, always put in your mind the law of demand. Okay, the law of demand states that if price of commodity increases, the quantity demanded will fall. Lan ay lagi nyo iisipin, ilalagay niyo yan sa inyong isipan. Now, if the price is increasing, the quantity demanded is, the quantity demanded is decreasing. Lagi nyo ilalagay sa utak niyo yan ha. So, wag niyo kakalimutan. Okay, law ang pinag-uusapan, so that is increasing or decreasing momentum. Okay, and if price of commodity falls, quantity will increase. No, kung tataas na ang price, so bababa ang ang uh, quantity, ang isang kum uh, quantity ng isang commodity. Ah, pag tataas, pag bababa da yung price, sorry, pag bababa da yung price ng isang commodity, tataas yung quantity demand niya. Okay, quantity demand ng isang commodity. Okay. So, law of demand indicates only direction of change in quantity demanded in response to change in price of elasticity of demand. So, ano ibig sabihin ng elasticity of demand? It talks about the changes of the uh, changes in the price. No, pag may konti lang or konti or uh, malaking changes doon sa price, nagkakaroon ng changes sa curve ng demand. Okay. So, nagkakaroon siya ng changes sa curve ng demand. Elasticity of demand states with how much, how much, yan, states with how much or to what extent, ayan, to what extent the quantity demanded will change in response to a change in any determinants. Okay, ulitin ko. Elasticity of demand states with how much, ayan, how much, magkano, or to what extent, yun, to what extent the quantity demanded will change in response to change in any determinants. So, ano yung mga determinants yung sinabi ko sa inyo? You have the word biter. 
no they are the they are the reason why nagkakaroon ng changes sa sa quantity demanded okay so always remember that the law of demand or a demand is inversely proportional okay they are inversely proportional in relationship okay so that is what we call elasticity of demand so it talks about the changes when there is a uh, changes in in response to the change of price okay so elasticity okay we have the concept of the elasticity as general okay so let's have here uh also applicable for demand and supply okay so we have if price rises by 10 percent no yung price daw ay nag-rise ng sa into 10 percent so what happens to the demand okay tumataas yung presyo what happened to the demand as the law of demand no it is the demand will the quantity demanded will fall if they are rising in 10 percent so nagkakaroon ng uh, sensitivity no nagkakaroon ng sensitivity sa price kasi when the price is rising no the demand is falling okay how about more than 10 percent no tataas ba ang demand or magpo-fall pa more so it will fall more because the price is more than 10 percent so nag-add na naman ng 10 percent that will become 20 percent okay how about less than 10 percent tataas pa ba okay tataas pa rin ba so there is a uh, example let's say a price rises uh, sorry a price less than let's say a, if a price less than okay less than 10 percent tataas ba ang demand of course tataas ang demand bakit kasi nga mababa ang presyo ng isang goods or services okay elasticity measures the extent to which demand will change ayan so elasticity measures the to the extent the, the extent to which demand will change okay so definition of elasticity of demand so we have elasticity of demand measures yeah elasticity measures the extent to which quantity demanded of a commodity increases or decreases in response to increase or decrease in any of its quantity quantitative determinant so that is the biter okay so ibig sabihin if they are if the biter exists okay if the biter exists it's either shifting to the left or shifting to the right of the demand curve and that's the time na magkakaroon ng responses from the elasticity of demand okay so we have here <coughs> So, excuse me. So we have several types of elasticity of demand according to the source of the change in the demand. So for example, if the price is the, is, is the source of the change, okay, we have the price elasticity of demand. So we will tackle elasticity, price elasticity, elasticity of demand because the reason, one of the reasons why the demand is changing or the curve of the demand is changed, nag-iiba yung curve ng demand, Nagaganon, papataas na naman sa iba-iba yung forma niya because of the price, because of the changes of the price, okay? There is a change in the price. So the elasticity or responsiveness, no? Another term yan ang elasticity, 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 responsiveness. Of the mind in a market is great or small, ayan, is great or small as the amount demanded increases, no? As the amount demanded increases much or little for a given fall in price. Ibig sabihin daw dyan, tumataas ang uh, quantity demanded because there is a falling of bumaba ang presyo. Okay? And diminishes, uh, and diminishes much or little for a given price in price. So that is or uh, that is the definition of the, by Dr. Marshall. Okay? So, anong ginamit doon na, na ano, na in order to have the, the, that definition? Paano nagawa yun ni Marshall? By using the principles or the definition of law of demand. Okay? So, according to the source of the change, okay, source of the change, the following types of elasticity of demand can be mentioned. So, ang pag-uusapan natin tonight is price elasticity of demand. Cross, uh, cross price yan, tawag yan, cross price. Okay, cross price elasticity of demand, which is the, the elasticity in relation to the change of the price of other goods and services. Income elasticity ay pag-uusapan natin. So, hindi na tayo mag-uusap about advertisement elasticity, okay? Kasi hindi naman lalabas sa board exam yan, okay? So, that is under already to monetary economics. 
So we have according to the degree of the change in the demand. Yeah, so merong rate, no? merong rate. There are a lot of rates in the change of the demand. Okay, so the elasticity can be classified in. Ito yung mga dapat ninyong tandaan. This is very important. Okay, we have perfectly elastic, relatively elastic. Okay, unitary elasticity. And we have relatively inelastic and we have perfectly inelastic. Okay? So, ito yung mga pagtatandaan nyo lagi, yung five na yan. So, isa-isahin natin yung uh, pag-uusapan natin na source of the change. We have price, elasticity of demand, cross, price, and then income. By using this following rates or degree. Okay? So, let's start first with the price, elasticity of demand. <coughs> Price elasticity of demand is a measurement of percent, no percentage change. Because percentage pinag-usapan, it talks about like this. <coughs> okay, percentage, kanyan percentage. Okay, and demand due to percentage change in own in own price of the commodity. So the price or elasticity of demand may be defined as the ratio. So pwede pag-usapan ng ratio like one is two. To ganon of the relative change in demand and price variable. So na yung price is nagbabary or nagchange. Okay. So this is the formula of the price elasticity demand. So we have here that E represents elasticity. No, actually paganon yun parang ganon ganon. So we have E represents elasticity, which is percentage. Ayan, percentage or proportional. Proportional is used in another word for ratio. Okay, proportional term yan. So yeah, percentage or proportional change in quantity demanded uh, divided by, okay, percentage or proportional change in the price. Okay, yan ang, uh, <coughs> ang uh, ano tawag dyan? Uh, formula, okay? So, hindi mo lang ako magtatakil about this computation. Magtatakil lang ako pag ano na. Pag matatapusin mo na natin yung elasticity. Okay, para at least you have already the idea. Actually, kahit hindi naman siya itakal talaga masyado yung elasticity, no, um, makukuha nyo pa rin yung computation na yun. Kasi it is the use of your ano, um, quantitative at saka, yes, quantitative computation of calculus. Yun. So, pag-uusapan natin yun. Yung about sa functions, gano'n. Okay? So, this are this is the, the ano, price elasticity, elasticity of demand. Ito yung kanyang um, formula. But for me, hindi ko siya ginagamit usually etong price elasticity. Kasi hindi naman siya lumalabas sa board exam ang ganitong tanong. Okay? So, pag you are my student, no, ang dami nating mangyaring exam ganito. Siguro final exam or remedial exam, ang daming ganito. <laughs> So, yun. So, magbibigay ako ng, uh, ng uh, sample mamaya. Okay? So, we will be having a quiz right after this. Okay? A sample of the question about price elasticity of demand. Um, uh, using, um, ang tawag dyan? Retention na lang. Ganun. So, using retention on how to compute for the price. Okay? Yun. And we have degree of price elasticity of demand. So, yung degree pinag-usapan natin, we have perfectly elastic, perfectly inelastic. Sa so, magkaiba ha, inelastic, ito kanina is elastic. We have unitary elastic. We have relatively elastic at saka relatively inelastic. Okay? So, perfectly elastic demand. Ano ibig sabihin ng perfectly elastic demand? Okay? When you talk about perfectly in a uh, perfectly elastic okay perfectly elastic demand meaning it is infinite okay so it is infinite no it is like the demand curve is horizontal and the consumers are willing to buy all at all buy all the, the goods or services at a particular price and none at other price. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Okay? The perfectly elastic is, pag na natin basahin masyado yung ang definition. Okay? Direct to the point na tayo. So, <coughs> ano ibig sabihin ng perfectly elastic demand? Ibig sabihin it's infinite. 
no? Ibig sabihin, bibilhin ng tao, okay, bibilhin ng tao ang goods or services kahit gaano pa kadami, okay, kahit ga- gaano kadami, bibilhin niya yan in a specific price, okay? There is a specific price. Saan yan usually nangyayari? Sa ukay-ukay. Okay? Sa ukay-ukay nangyayari yan. Kasi, um, lalo na pag may mga sales, right? No? Isang product na inaabangan mo ay uh, bumagsak ang presyo. So, bumili ka nun because you are uh, uh, binili mo kasi gusto mo din ibenta sa iba. Example, sa ukay-ukay ay bumagsak silang ng 50 pesos. No? 50 pesos. Tapos, ang dami mong binili because it's affordable and it's affordable at saka pwede mo siyang ibenta sa iba ng mataas na presyo because the quality of the product. So, ibig sabihin, it's horizontal. No? Always remember the graph, ha? Pag elastic demand. So, ibig sabihin, it's horizontal. No? Pag ganito. If this is the price, this is the quantity demanded. No? If, so, pag ang price niya is 5 pesos, no? Kahit, then you have the 5, 10, 15 here. So, Kahit ka, gaano, paka, okay, so we have your specific price, particular price na binigay. So there is a particular price na binigay kahit bibili siya ng kahit gaano kadami basta in the specific price, no? In the particular price, okay? So that is what they call perfectly elastic demand, okay? So the flatter the slope of the demand curve, the higher the elasticity of demand. So the flatter, ibig sabihin, no? The flatter, the straight, uh, yung flatter, yung flat. So the flatter, the slope of the demand curve, the higher the elasticity of demand. No? Kasi nga, yung price niya is um, consistent. Okay? So that is what we call perfectly um, elastic. Okay? Next, we have perfectly in elastic demand. So as you can observe here, sa, so doon sa kanina, it's infinite. Bakit siya infinity? Bakit po siya sir word na infinity? Bakit siya infinity? Kasi nga walang katapusan yung bila ano uh, walang katapusan ang pagbibili or bilihan ng mga tao. Walang katapusan it's infinite buying of uh, uh buying of products, no? It's infinite buying of products kasi the price is set. Okay, the price is set. Unless ko mag-change yung price or increasing or decreasing, so hindi na siya tawag perfectly elastic. Okay, hindi na din siya tawag na infinite doon kasi nagbabago ang, ang ang purchasing power ng tao. Okay? Purchasing power. Okay, so we have here perfectly in elastic demand. Ano ibig sabihin ng perfectly in elastic demand? Kahit gaano pa kataas ang presyo, ganun lang din yung quantity na ibibilhin mo. Okay, example, we have iPhone. Okay? We have iPhone. You are upgrading your iPhone every year okay, because kasi mayroong bagong uh, lumalabas ganun. so we have the price here and then the quantity demanded so you have you buy one iphone at dati you buy one uh, uh, last 2020 uh, dito tayo mag uh, sa graph na to so what is perfectly in elastic okay so ano ibig sabihin ng perfectly in elastic let us going to define it first okay perfectly in elastic it is an elasticity is equals to zero as you can see in the graph Elasticity, elasticity of demand is equals to zero. Why? Because the demand curve is vertical. Kanina horizontal yun. No? The flatter, the demand curve, the elasticity of demand is, is increasing. Okay? <laughs> Here, the demand curve is vertical. No? Vertical ang demand curve. No? It is vertical. So, the quantity demanded does not change as price changes. Big sabihin, hindi nag-change ang quantity demanded. No, nag-stay pa rin siya. Kung isa lang iPhone ang nabili mo, isa lang talaga, no? Example, let's say bumili ka nung anang uh, iPhone nung o oh, na ano. Bumili ka ng iPhone na uh, tawag diyan. Dati ang nabili mo, it's 100k, you know. Pagkabili mo 2019, bumili ka ng iPhone na worth of 100k. Okay? So, next year, uh, last 2019, let's say last 2019 ito. So, pagka 2020, okay, pagka 2020, nagbago ang price, no? Nagbago. So, you want to buy, uh, sa 100K na ito, bumili ka ng iPhone, iPhone 10, yon, iPhone XR, yon, iPhone XR. 
So, bumili ka ng iPhone XR nung 2019, no? Pagka 2020, nalaman mo na may bukas na ano, na bagong uh, may introduce na bagong tawag diyan. And introduce na bagong iPhone, pero hindi mo siya afford, no? But you cannot afford it because of the price is too higher. And then you are like It's all, in, in, in elasticity also, pinag-uusapan din dun yung consumption ng tao, yung utility. No, kung nagsasawa na ba siya sa phone niya, ayun. Kung nagsasawa na, di ba nag-change ng iPhone time to time. Yung ibang tao, mas gusto nilang bumili, pagkatapos nila mag, ano, mag uh, bili ng, ng, ng uh, touchscreen na phone or smartphone na phone, pagka next year, ibibili nila, skipad na. Parang ganun, kasi nagsasawa na daw sila magamit ng touchscreen na phone. So in 2020 instead of buying iPhone so sabi ay nagsasawa na ako sa iPhone kasi magastos masyado. So you buy um you buy Oppo kasi gusto mo pampaganda lang parang like like ano lang. So buy you, you buy Oppo worth of what? Worth of 25k or 22k ganon example lang kasi mas mura. Okay? So you buy uh, Oppo ayun. So and then No, so nagsawa ka na. So ilan pa rin ang binili, binili mong Oppo? Isa pa rin. Isa lang binili mong Oppo kasi isa lang man yung kailangan mo. So whatever the price is, the quantity demanded is uh, only one. Always remember that the quantity demanded is uh, the, 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 the demand curve is a downward sloping curve. Pababa yun ang downward sloping curve. Okay? So ito yung pababa. Kaya, kaya pababa tayo, hindi tayo pataas. Kasi kung pataas yan, that is supply curve. Pababa kasi ang down uh, ang demand curve. Okay, that is downward sloping curve. Okay? So ano nangyayari? Okay, ano nangyayari dito sa Yes, Jason, pwede ka na magano. May importante ka ba? Okay lang 'yan. So we have here uh price 3. Ano yung uh, number 3 na price? So, ibig sabihin ah uh, pagod ka na sa touch screen, pagod ka na mag iPhone, so you go uh, Oppo, tapos pag next year 2021 Pagod ka na talaga gumamit ng Oppo. So you buy uh, you buy na a keypad kasi nga yung keypad kahit sa bukid ka pa may signal. Okay? So you buy keypad worth of 5k or 3k na keypad or 2k or may 500 naman. 'Yon. So 'yon, so mas namumurahan ka. So the quantity demanded is one because you only need one. You only live once. Oh, YOLO. 'Yon. So that is perfectly an elastic demand. Okay, so always remember the graph. No, it's going down. Okay, it's going down and is and it is straight line vertically. Okay, that's a vertical and it is equals to zero. Bakit equals to zero siya? Kasi wala kang in, walang uh, walang income from the supplier there. So there is uh, equals to zero. Why? Because the uh, the quantity demand is zero. There's no change in the quantity demand. Okay. Only in the price, okay? Oh, my gosh, we're not under this one. Okay lang, go na, Jason. Pwede ka na mag-ano. Andito na ba si Jason? Yes, Jay, pwede ka na po mag-ano. May recordings naman. Nali ha. So let's go now to Unitary. Elastic demand. So, ano ibig sabihin ng unitary? <laughs> ano ibig sabihin ng unitary? Elastic demand. So, pag-uusapan natin kung ano yung unitary elastic demand. So, yung unitary elastic demand. So, kanina we have perfectly elastic at saka perfectly inelastic. Yan. Kaya siya naging inelastic kasi yung in is no elastic demand. So, no No quant, no change in the quantity demand. Ganon, okay? So yeah. So let's go now to unitary elastic or unit elastic. So anibig sabi ng unit elastic. 
A uh, unit is elastic is elasticity to demand is equals to 1. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Okay? When the proportionate change in demand produces the same change in the price of the product. Okay? So the demand is preferred as unitary elastic demand. So example, okay? Sabi dito, the demand curve for unitary elastic de demand is represented as rectangular hyperbole. So ano ibig sabihin yan? It's like a concave, no? Ganon. Ano ibig sabihin ng unitary elastic demand or uh, ano tawag dyan? Equals to 1. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin yan? Um, kaya siya equals to 1 because if there are, if there is an increasing, yun, if there is an increasing of quantity demand in, uh, there is a 1, let's say 1, yan, quantity demand is increasing, no, uh, the price, no, the price of the product is affected. Okay? So, bababa. Kasi nga, doon tayo sa law of demand, ha? Sabi doon sa law of demand that when the price is increasing, the law, the quantity demanded is uh, decreasing. Okay? So, here, example here that we have the uh, elastic. Pag sinabi mong elastic, always remember. Pag sinabi mong elastic, always remember it talks about the uh, elastic. Ibig sabihin, pataas. Okay? There is an increase in the demand. Okay? Demand yung pinag-usapan natin, ha? So, there is an increase in the quantity demand. It, it doesn't talk about the uh, price. It talks about the demand. Okay? So, we have elastic demand. Okay? So, example, if there is an increase in the quantity demand, so that is uh, increase in the quantity demand, so that is being elastic. Okay? That is being elastic. So, anong dahilan kaya nagkakaroon ng increase in the quantity demand? Because the price is decreasing. Okay? The price is decreasing. Yeah. As you can see here, no, there is an increase from here. Nagkakaroon ng increase in the quantity demand. So, bumaba ang presyo. Okay? So, that is equals to 1. Sino ang 1 dito? Itong quantity demanded. Okay? Next is we have relatively elastic demand. Ano ibig sabihin ng relatively uh, elastic demand? So, a relatively elastic demand, ito yung type ng elasticity that, ngali, kasi parang I feel, okay, so we have relatively elastic demand. Ano ibig sabihin ng relatively elastic demand? Okay, so pag sinabi mong relatively elastic demand, there is, so we have, wait lang, okay, so we have, there is a sensitivity no, there is a sensitivity in the change of the price. No, in the change of the price. So the demand is relatively sensitive to a small price. So that is being relatively uh, elastic demand. Relatively elastic demand refers to the demand when the proportionate change produced in demand is greater than proportionate change in price of a product. Ano ibig sabihin nun? The elasticity of demand is equals, uh, sorry, the elasticity of demand is greater than 1. Ano ibig sabihin? If there are changes or small changes in the price of the demand, uh, if there are, what do you call it? If there are a small changes in the price, no? there is also a small changes in the quantity demand. So that is what we call relatively elastic demand. Example, so if the quantity, as you can see here, okay, dito tayo sa pinakapunta, okay? So as you can see here, bumaba, okay, bumaba yung tinatawag nating quantity demanded. Bumaba ng 10%, nagkaroon ng 10% less. Bakit nagkaroon ng 10% less? Because of the price is increasing no yung pinag-usapan natin lot of demand when the price increasing the quantity demanded is decreasing kasi walang bibili now what happened if you're going to lower the price no that will give you increase in the quantity demand kasi mas maraming bibili pag pag mababa ang presyo so that is what we call relatively elastic it is being sensitive okay sensitive Hala. Sensitive to the change of, yan. They are be it, it is being sensitive in the change of the small price. No? Relatively sensitive, the demand is relatively sensitive 
to small price changes. Okay? So, ano yung graph niya? It's being like, di ba? Pag, gani, pag ganyan siya nung, uh, ganyan siya nung una, ngayon is pwede na siyang maganito. So, nagkaroon siya ng changes talaga. That is being, nagkakaroon talaga ng malaking changes. Okay? Pag, example, let's say, ang price is 2%, pes, 2% ang tumaas, no? Tumaas ng 2%. So, marami yung ayaw. So, marami yung, walang equal. So, example, let's say, patulad dito sa kita ninyo, like 5%, no? Masasabi mo na it is unitary. Masasabi mo talaga it is unitary. Kung ang pag, example, let's say, pagbaba ng presyo ay 5%, Di ba? Masasabi mo siya kung unitary, kung ang pagtaas din ng quantity demand niya ay 5%. Dapat pareha sila. Okay? So dito, hindi, walang ganyan nangyari eh, sa elastic demand. Ang nangyari dito is that, nagkaroon ng increase ng 5%. So ano nangyari ngayon dun sa quantity? No? Nagkaroon ng more than the price. No? It is all, greater than, yan, greater than the proportionate change in price. Mas mataas yung pag-change ng quantity demand kaysa doon sa price percentage. Example, yun natin, if the price is, uh, example, ang price is from from 5 pesos, no, tumaas ng, uh, ng 8 pesos, no, 8 pesos. So, so ibig sabihin, the, uh, not 8 pesos, Nag tumaas ng 8%, sorry, percentage pa lang yung pinag dito. Okay, wala pa lang pesos. Ang pinag-usapan pala sa elasticity is, Percentage and proportional. Okay, so percentage, we have 8%. Okay, so let's say from 5%, 5%, uh, sorry, from 0%, tumaas ng 5%. Okay, tumaas ng 8%. Now, ano mangyayari sa quantity demanded? No, From also from 0, okay, from 0 is iba 8% yung price dito para maging relatively elastic siya. Yung quantity demanded ngayon ay bumaba ng 10%. So, ano nangyayari? Yung quantity demanded ay mas mataas kaysa sa percent ng price. Okay? So, that is what we call relatively elastic demand. Kasi nagkakaroon ng sensitivity doon sa kahit maikling changes ng price, percentage ng price, nagkakaroon ng sensitivity or changes sa uh, quantity demand. Nag-gets ninyo? Okay? So, we have here relatively and elastic demand. <laughs> ano naman ang relatively and elastic demand? Okay, it is, okay, klaro naman siguro sa graph, okay? Pag sinabi mong relatively and elastic demand, that is, the demand curve is relatively insensitive. Ano ibig sabihin ng insensitive? The demand curve is relatively insensitive to small price changes. Hindi siya masyadong nagko-curve even if the price is getting higher. Okay, so that is what we call elasticity. Elasticity is uh, less than 1. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Okay, as you can see here, diba, the price is we have here uh, example dito. Okay, bumaba ang, bumaba ang price ng 10%. Ano nangyari? No? Tumaas ng 5% ang quantity demand. No, ibig sabihin mas mataas pa uh, it is proportional mas mataas pa ang percentage na pagkababa ng presyo kaysa sa quantity demanded na <laughs> 5%. Excuse me. Yan. So this is what we call relatively in elastic demand. Okay? <clears throat> so mataas yung percentage ng price kaysa sa quantity demand. Nakuha? That is why less than 1, no? It is being insensitive. Ayan, insensitive ang term. Insen insensitive. Ayan. Hindi siya masyadong, ano, hindi siya masyadong gumagalaw. She is not being sensitive. Ayan, no? Example here, meron naman tayo ibang graph dito. Oh, ganyan. So, yung graph. So, we have here, example, from price here, uh, yung first price mo is dyan. Ngayon, tumaas ng, let's say, uh, tumaas ng 20%. Yan, tumaas ng 20%. So, what happened with your quantity demanded? Kasi tumaas yung price. So, as the law of demand, no? When the price is increasing, the quantity demanded is decreasing, right? So, from here, no? Dito is yung quantity demanded mo is zero. So, the quantity demanded mo is here. So, ngayon, tumaas yung presyo ng 20%. So, nagkaroon ng konting ano, adjustment sa quantity demand na pa-decrease 
So 20% so nagkaroon ng quantity demanded na changes ng quantity demanded ng 10%. Bakit? Kasi dapat mas mataas yung price kesa sa uh, quantity demanded when you talk about inelastic because sensitive lang ng konti si quantity demanded sa pagtaas ng presyo. Okay? So that is what we call relatively inelastic demand. Okay? Ulitin natin. Okay, ulitin natin. So we have the infinite. Pag sinabi mong infinite, walang katapusan. Okay, that is being perfectly elastic demand. So that walang katapusang, yan. So that is being horizontal. Ayan. Walang katapusang quantity demand. Tuloy-tuloy lang siya. Ayan. The flatter it is, the more the quantity demanded is increasing. Okay, so we have uh, quantity uh, elasticity of demand of uh, demand uh, price elasticity of demand is equals to zero. And ibig sabihin niya, that is what being perfectly an elastic demand. Ibig sabihin hindi na change si quantity demanded even if the price is changing, and that is what we call curve uh, horizontal uh, vertically. Ato kanina is horizontally. This one is vertically. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, hindi gumagalaw si quantity demand. Isa lang talagang pipili ang bibili niya kahit bumaba pa ng bumaba, ng bumaba, ng bumaba ang presyo. Okay? Pababa. So, kahit nag-change yung prices, pababa, no? So, isa lang talaga ang quantity demanded, ang, ang quantity na bibili niya. So, it talks about also relatively elastic demand that is being, uh, it's greater than 1. Okay? So, what is the, the graph? The graph is, pag sinabi mo naman greater than 1, Meaning, there is sensitivity, relatively high sensitivity. Nakakaroon ng sensitivity doon sa price. No? So, ibig sabihin, the price is um, uh, lower. Uh, no, no. Eh, tama. Mas, mababa ang percent ng price. Tama. Mababa ang percent ng price kesa sa quantity demanded. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, if the price is, uh, let's say from the price P, yan, Yan, so P1 mo, this, tumaas siya, okay? So this is the quantity demand, yeah, this is the demand curve, and then we have here your quantity, and then we have here the uh, quantity demand, okay? So we have here, from the price here, so you got here this one, so that, that is your first curve. Now, tumaas ng 5%, okay? Tumaas ng 5% yung, yung price, so as law of demand, no? Pag tumaas ang uh, presyo, mabababa ang quantity demanded, right? So nagkaroon ng greater effect no nagkaroon ng greater effect dun sa quantity demanded. So, 5% lang ang price na nag-change increasing. So, yung quantity demanded mo ay nag-increase ng 10%. Ibig sabihin, mas mataas yung uh, quantity demanded na percentage kesa sa price. Yun, yun ang iisipin nyo, ha? Okay? So, when you talk about EP or uh, price elasticity of demand less than 1, ibig sabihin po niyan ay ah, uh, nagkaroon ng insensitivity. Ayan, insensitivity. Okay? And sensitivity. Ito kanina dito, sensitive siya. Ayan, sensitive. Parang babae, sensitive pa minsan. Ayan. So, <laughs> parang kami. <laughs> Ayan. Okay, we talk about price sensitivity of the one that is less than one. Meaning, it is being insensitive. Ano ibig sabihin niya, no? Uh, mas mataas ang pag-change, ang um, percentage change ng price kesa sa quantity demanded. Now, example, if this is the price here, okay, so we have here another price, uh, again, dito, price increase here of uh, 10%. Yan. So, we have here the quantity demanded here. So, nagkaroon din ng change lesser ng quantity demanded ng 5%. So, ibig sabihin, mas mataas pa rin yung price na 10%. So magkaiba sila right? Nagkaro nagkaroon lang ng kontra si EP si ano si si greater than 1 at saka si lesser than 1. Ayun. So that is being inelastic meaning pag sinabi mong inelastic being insensitive in insensitive demand. Yan, in insensitive demand. Okay? So we we'll talk about EP or a price elasticity of demand that is equals to 1 that is being unitary elastic demand. So, ano ibig sabihin ng unitary elastic demand? If the change in demand and change of the price product is the same. Ibig sabihin, if the price, let's say here, okay, so this is the elasticity of demand. If the price here is P1 here, P less than P1 here. So, the price is increasing to uh, 5%. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, no, okay, your low, your quantity here. So, ibig sabihin, 
mababa din ang quantity demanded mo ng 5%. Ibig sabihin, dapat pareha sila. And that is what we call unitary. Ibig sabihin, pareha sila. That is equals to 1. So kung ano yung price, ganun din ang quantity demanded. And that is unitary elastic demand. Okay? So kuha. Did you get it? Mas madali ba siyang intindihin kesa pagbasa sa libro? Tama ba? Naintindihan, naintindihan niyo ba ako? You raise your hand if you understand me. Very good. So, mas naintindihan niyo ba ako kaysa sa teacher niyo? Charot. <laughs> Yung teacher namin, ang hirap talaga niyang mag-explain nito. Kasabi niya pa, hindi doon niya masyado maintindihan. Sabi ko, ha, madali lang naman siya intindihin. So, that is, ano, so nagkakaroon lang ng price changes, right? Saan lang dyan medyo malibog kayo? Yung medyo nahirapan kayo mag -intindi. Yung relatively, medyo mahirap siyang intindihin, right? Kasi nga, because of the change in the prices, no yon so pag tumaas yung price um kung, kung kung mas mataas pa yung percentage ng price ganon so it talks about sa percentage and proportional proportion okay hopefully mas nagets niyo ako okay nagets niyo talaga yung ano ko discussion kasi naral ko talaga yun ng ilang araw para mas i-explain sa inyo ng mas specific ayon na mas madali kesa sa magbabasa basa ka pa did you get it guys are you ready for your quiz Thanks, <laughs> Nagad, sir. <laughs> Later on. Okay, so let's next. Uh, next is we have uh, what we call the income. Uh, so this is the curve. Okay, so this is the curve. Sorry. So elasticity, various demand curve. So we have here, yeah. So this is the infinite. Na yung pinag-usapan natin, infinite. Okay, yung walang mangyaya. Uh, walang, if there is no, there, there is no changes in the price, no, madaming bibilhin na quality demanded. Okay, so we have perfectly inelastic is equals to zero here. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Pag bumaba, bumaba ng price, ganun lang din na quantity demanded ang kanyang bibilhin. Okay, ganun lang din kadami. Isa lang pa rin ang bibilhin niya. Okay, pag sinabi mo namang very inelastic or uh, yun. So very inelastic, okay, that is being relatively inelastic or very inelastic or relatively inelastic that's uh lesser uh, lesser than one so lesser than one so that is negative yun that's negative so that is being like uh the lesser than one sabihin, there is being insensitivity mataas yung percentage na nagchange sa price niya no pero yung quantity demanded ay lesser lang ang percentage na nagchange sa kanya okay so that is what we call very inelastic. Pag sabi mo namang very elastic, no? Pag sabi mo very elastic, that is being relatively elastic, no? That is yeah. So greater than one, but it's negative. That is positive three. Sorry, that is positive three. That is uh, greater than one. So yeah. So that is yeah. So greater than one. So more than one. Okay. So that is very elastic. Ibig sabihin. Uh, nagkakaroon ng greater sensitivity. Ibig sabihin, sensitive siya sa nangyayaring. Kahit konting pag-change sa percentage ng price, may malaking epekto doon sa quantity demanded. That's very, that is relatively elastic. Pag sinabi mo namang unitary elastic, that is equals to 1. Bakit may negative 1 yun dyan? So that is um, equals to one. Ay, okay. Gets ko na kung bakit negative yan. Because elasticity represent lang. Elasticity is always representing negative. Sorry. Oh, nakalimutan ko na. Ayan. So, elasticity, elasticity is always representing negative. If you see like positive in the choices, it's okay. No, it's okay. Pero pag tinanong doon yung about sa ano, pag may mga negative-negative, you choose negative, ha? Kasi ano yan eh, uh, yun talaga yung ano talaga yung kanyang operations na ginagamit. Uh -uh. Uh, yun ang operation sa elasticity. Okay? So, pag sabi nyo unitary elastic, ibig sabihin, yung price percentage na nag-change is equal with the quantity demanded percent of change. Okay? So, these are the measurement of price elasticity of the mind. So, we have the total expenditures method, proportionate method, point elasticity, single point. Okay? Parang ako, single. Ganon. So you have arc elasticity which is two points. Yan. Ah uh, kapag sinabi na lang total expenditure yung total yung total utility or utils, yan. We have proportionate method yung by ano yan, 1 is to 2 ganun, yung ratio ratio. Okay, so let's go 
is into total expenditure method. Ano ibig sabihin ng total expenditure method? It is where the total outlay is divided by, uh, uh, total outlay, outlay or total expenditures ang term. No? Total outlay or total expenditures. Okay? Okay, total outlay or total expenditure is equals to price times the quantity demanded. Kasi nga, yung price plus yung quantity demanded. So that will give you total expenditures. Yung utility mo na, na yung na, na provide Okay? So there are three possibilities. Okay? So we have here the uh, elasticity of demand is greater than one. Okay? That is being uh, relatively elastic. Okay? So we have here unitary. Unitary elastic. Ayan. So, and you have here also the relatively inelastic. Yan, relatively inelastic. Ito, elastic, ito, relatively inelastic. That is, that is lesser than one. Uh, inelastic. And this is the total expenditures. Okay, example. So, we have here greater than one. So, huwag nyo isipin yan. Hindi naman malabas sa board exam yan. Huwag nyo isipin yan. Dagdag lang yun sa problema. Ayan. Pag, if you are in my class, yun. Hindi yan dagdag sa problema. Dagdagan ko pa talaga yung problema. <laughs> Pag is regular student ko kayo, ganun. Like sa college, ganun. You have summarized relationship in the total expenditures method. So we have pag false, pag price is false, pag bumaba ang price. So there is a uh, total expenditure rises and that is what we call a greater than one. Okay, the elasticity price or the price elasticity is greater than one. When the price is rises, the uh, total expenditure is false. Okay, and that will give you lesser than one, a uh, greater than one, sorry. Next, we have when the false and rise, uh, when the price is false and there is no change in the to total, yeah, dito, this one, there is no change in the total expenditures that is equals to one. Okay, when the, ri when the price is rising also, when there is no happening in the total expenditures, so here in ENF, no, so there is what they call an equals to one. Okay, pag bumaba naman ang price at bumaba ang total expenditures, that is lesser than 1 here. Okay, pag bumaba naman din ang pag rise, tumaas siya. Pag tumaas din ang price, tumaas din ang, uh, ang total expenditures. From, so here, so that will give you a uh, lesser than 1. Okay, so these are examples. So wag na yun naintindihin, huwag lang kayo dyan. Okay, so wag na yan. So we have percentage of proportion method. Hindi naman la, salong lumalabas to. Yan. It is also known as the percentage method, flux method, yan, ratio method, and arithmetic method. So wag na natin yun pag-usapan. So yeah, uh, okay, pag-usapan lang natin itong percentage method pag nagbigay, later sa quizzes. Doon na lang, mas maganda yung explanation ko doon later. Okay, eto, about dito. Okay, later na yan. So let's proceed to income elasticity of demand. Okay. Income elasticity of demand, it is income elasticity of the demand. So it talks about the income. Lagi natin pinag-uusapan. There is a uh, happening in the income, no? Diba, income is one of the determinants, yung biter, no word biter, sa demand. Diba, isa yan siya sa mga um, uh, determinants ng demand, the value of demand. So... Income, elasticity of demand is the decree. Oh, diba we have two types of income, uh, goods sa income. We have inferior goods, tsaka necessary goods. No? Yun. We have off responsiveness of quantity demanded of commodity due to a change in the consumer's income. Ang other things remain constant. So, nagkakaroon ng change or responsiveness doon sa quantity demand uh, because of the change in the consumer's income. Okay? So, in other words, it measures by how much the quantity demanded changes this with respect to that change in the income okay so there's a respect on the change in income whatever the quantity demanded change if the if the quality demanded changes when there is a changes in the income so whether it's it's increasing or decreasing okay so the income elasticity of the mind is defined as the percentage change or so percentage change kasi nga yung yung elasticity is percentage or proportional yan okay Percentage change in quantity demanded due to certain percent change in consumer's income. Okay? So this is the expression of income of uh, income elasticity of demand. Okay?
Okay, so income density of demand with percent change in quantity demanded is divided by percent change in income. So this is the formula. Okay, so untin natin yan ilagay sa ano natin. Baka mabubuang lang kayo. Ayan, so madali lang yan pag meron ng ano, pag meron siyang question. Ayan. Mag-uusapan din natin yan. Okay, so these are the uh, types of income elasticity of demand. So we have positive income elasticity of uh, demand, which is greater than zero. And we have negative income elasticity of demand, which is lesser than zero. And zero income elasticity is equal to zero. Yan pag-uusapan natin. So under positive income, we have greater than unity of uh, uh, greater than one. Okay? So income elasticity equal to unity uh, elasticity is equal to 1. And then income elasticity less than unity, that is, um, elasticity is equal, uh, less than than less than 1. Okay? Pag-usapan natin isa, isa We have positive income, uh, elasticity of demand. Okay? So, if, if there is a direct relationship between income of the consumer and the demand for the commodity, then income elasticity will be positive. Kung merong direct, ano, relationship between the consumer and the income of the consumer, okay? And the demand of the commodity and the income of the consumer, you know. So that is, if the quantity demanded for a commodity increases, tumaas na yung quantity demanded, okay? With the rise in the income, pag tumaas din ang income, okay? Meaning, the consumer, of the consumer and vice versa, it is said to be positive income elasticity. Bakit? Kasi pag tumaas ang income ng, ng, ng tawag dyan, pag tumaas ang income ng, ng consumer, mas gustong-gusto nila bumili ng kanilang gusto. So that is being positive. No? That is being positive in the elasticity of demand. What? Sorry. Example. For example, as the income of consumer increases, they consume more of superior goods. So what are superior goods? They are luxurious goods. Yung mga mahal, mamahalin or luxury goods. Luxury goods. And the contrary, as the income of consumer decreases, the, they consume less of luxurious goods. Kasi nga, bumaba ang kanilang income. Pero pag sinabi mong tumaas yung income nila at tumaas din ang quantity demanded sa elasticity of demand, ang tawag dyan is positive, right? So ibig sabihin, the consumers will buy or will consume more Superior are luxury goods. Ano mga luxury goods? Red ng car, mamahaling bag, mamahaling sandals, ayun. So what happens, sir, if, uh, ano, uh, what happens if inferior good? Di ba pinag-usapan natin yung inferior good? Yung inferior good, even if the income of the consumer is increasing, the quantity demanded is uh, decreasing. That is being negative. Okay? That is being negative to the income elasticity of demand. So that is inferior good. For your good is negative elasticity of demand, income elasticity of demand, okay? So we have three, na pag usapan natin, three types of positive income elasticity. We have income greater than unity, uh, greater than one. We have uh, income elasticity equal to unity uh, is equal to one. We have elasticity less than one, okay? Let's go first with the uh, elasticity that is greater than Income elasticity that is greater than unity yeah, or, or greater than one, okay? So if the percentage uh, change in the quantity demanded, yan, percentage daw ng quantity demanded ay nag-change, okay? For a commodity is greater than, so tumaas yung changes ng quantity demanded, greater than the percentage change in income of the consumers. Ano ibig sabihin nun, no? Kahit konti, no, pag sinabi mong greater than 1, no, nagkakaroon ng mas malaki or greater. Yung quantity demanded is greater yung change niya here, as you can see here, changes niya, kesa sa price na kahit ko, maliit lang ang changes. Kuha? Ay, sorry, ay income pala. That is income. That's not price. That's an income of the consumer. Naasa niya kung sa kanina. Okay. Uh, that's, yan kuha ninyo. Ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin yan, no, kahit konti lang yung pag, nag ng konti. Uh, Nag-rise ang income ng ng consumers ng 3%, no? Ng, ng, ng konti, no? Nagkaroon din ng rise in the demand, quantity demand, which is 7%. Ibig sabihin, mas mataas ang quantity, percentage ng quantity demanded kesa sa, kesa sa income. Okay? So, nag example, nagtaas dito ang quantity demanded ng 7% and then tumaas ng konti din ang income ng 3%. So, sino mas mataas ang quantity 
demanded. And that is to be called income elasticity greater than 1 or unity. Next, income elasticity is equals to unity. You know, parang elasticity demand lang din kanina, palit-ulit lang tayo doon. So pag sinabi mong unity, that is equals to 1, ibig sabihin kung ano yung amount, no, example, pag 5% din ang tinaas ng income niya, okay, ganun din sa quantity demand, 5% din ang tataas ng demand. Ibig sabihin parehas lang sila, unity. Unit, yan, equals. Pag sabi mong equals, that is pare-pareha lang. 5%, 5% din sa kabila. Okay? Parang kanina lang din, pulit-ulit naman tayo. <laughs> Ayan. So, letter C, we have income. Elastic. Di pag-usapan lang kasi natin dito is yung income. Kanina, price yung pinag-usapan natin, di ba? So, dito is income. Income, elasticity that is less than than unity. And ibig sabihin yan, pag tumaas yung income, okay, pag tumaas ang income ng, uh, ng pag tumaas yung income ng consumers, no, uh, tumaas lang din ng konti, it is being insensitivity. Ayan, insensitivity. Insensitivity, ayan, insensitive. Okay. Yun. So, that is being insensitive. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, konti lang din ang tinaas doon sa quantity demanded. Okay? So, yun. Example here, tumaas ng 5% yung consumer's income. So, ang demand rises is only 3%. Ibig sabihin, mas taas pa rin yung income rises tesa sa demand. Okay? So, we have negative income. Elasticity kanina, positive yun. So, pinag-usapan na natin pag sinabi mong negative, that is being inferior goods. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin ng inferior goods? Yun yung mga hindi man man kailangan. Yan, his one year. When the consumer's income rises from, yan, the quantity demanded of inferior goods falls. Okay? So, bakit? Pag sinabi mo inferior goods yan siya, kasi when the, in, the, the income of the consumers is increasing, no? So, they either stop or consume less of inferior goods. Kasi nga, mas gusto nila, ah, kahit matas pa yung income nila, pero kukunti lang pa rin yung bibilhin nila na commodity, okay, na, na goods or services, that is what they call inferior goods, okay? So that is negative income elasticity. Okay, next. Oh, inferior goods talagang best example dun. And this one is also zero income elasticity or demand. It is what we call uh, necessity goods. Yun. Yung mga necessary goods, Okay. Ito yung tinatawag natin na necessary good. So necessary good is a zero income elasticity. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin, importante siya kahit, kahit magtaas pa yung presyo niya, okay? kahit magtaas pa yung income niya, magtaas or magbaba pa yung presyo niya, ay sorry, income niya. So income pala yung usapan natin. Uh, tumaas or bumaba ang income niya, okay? Income niya, ganun pa rin kadami na yun pa rin yung quantity demanded na kanyang uh, bibilhin. Okay, there is no change in the quantity demanded of the, uh, there is no change in the quantity demanded, okay, uh, for the necessary, uh, for inferior goods, uh, for it, this one example of necessary goods, there is no change in the, you know, quantity demanded, okay, so if the income is increasing or decreasing, okay, so this is an example of zero income elasticity that is unnecessary goods, okay. Let's go now to the cross price elasticity, elasticity of demand. We talk about cross price. Did you get the income elasticity, elasticity guys? Nakuha niyo ba ako doon? Did you understand the income? Parang pares lang siya doon kanina, di ba? Sa price elasticity of demand. So if you get it, just raise your hand kung nag-gets ninyo ako. Ganun lang siya kasimple. Nag-gets ninyo ako or much better na lang panoorin niyo yung recordings. Naguluhan ba kayo? Actually, paras lang siya. Parang pinaulit-ulit lang natin. However, income lang yung pinag-usapan natin kanina. Parang paras lang din siya sa price. Ganon. Nga lang, walang inelastic doon sa income. Elasticity yung pinag-uusapan. Did you get me? Just raise your hand if you get me. Naintindihan ba ako? Very good. So, naintindihan naman. Okay, next. Mabutit naintindihan. So, let's proceed now to the cross elasticity of demand. Okay, or price cross or cross price. Okay? So, we have the measure uh, of responsiveness of the demand. Yan. For a good towards the change in the price of related goods. Ano yung mga related goods? We have the... Uh, 
substitute goods at saka si complementary goods. Okay, yan. Directed goods are two kinds. You have substitute goods and complementary goods. Meaning, yung cross elasticity of demand, yan ang pag-uusapan natin. Okay? So, in case the two goods are substitute for each other, like tea and coffee, the cross price elasticity will be positive. Bakit? Di ba yung substitute goods, pinag-usapan na natin that if the price of the tea is increasing, the quantity demanded or the demand for coffee is also increasing. So that is what we call substitute goods. Okay? So on the other hand, in case the goods are complementary in nature like pen in, and ink, the cross elasticity will be negative. Bucket. Example, the, the price of the pen is increasing. The demand for ink is decreasing. Okay? So that is being negative. Always remember, substitute goods are positive or cross price elasticity will be positive and complementary goods it is a cross elasticity will be negative yun lang ilagay niyo ilagay niyo sa isipan niyo wag niyo na wag niyo na isipin itong formula okay yun lang ilagay niyo sa isipan niyo okay so let's have now the definition no ang daming definition naman nito na wag na natin yan anuin ayoko ta Okay, so we have here, kasi na-explain ko kasi sa inyo eh, okay na yun, enough na yun. That's enough already. Okay, so we have, in case the two goods are substitute for each other, like tea and coffee, the price is positive. Oh, sinabi ko na kanina yan eh. Ngayon na, pag, pag bumaba, di bumaba din siya, ganun. So that is being, ano. Okay, so types of cross elasticity of demand. So we have positive, negative, and zero. Ayun. So, Positive uh, cross elasticity is not because of substitute goods. Yun. Those are substitute goods. Okay? So, of each other than cross, we have the price. No, If the price is increasing, the, quant the quantity of, of commodity is also increasing. Okay? So, that is what they call uh, positive cross elasticity. But negative naman, okay, that is being complementary goods. Complementary goods is when the price of the other good if the price of the good is increasing the other good the demand of the other good is decreasing but tumaas ang price dito so mama bumaba di ba bumaba ang ang quantity demanded ng isang good so that is negative cross okay pag zero cross elasticity of demand meaning cross elasticity is zero when two or goods are not related to each other hindi sila related to each other for example, bumili ka ng yan. Uh, for instance, increase in price of the car does not affect the demand of for cloth. Hindi naman mag-affect ang demand ng cloth. So that's cross elasticity of demand. Because when they are not related to each other, equals to zero. So that is being um, vertical. Okay, that is being vertical. Pag zero cross elasticity of demand, they are not related goods. Okay? So do you get me? Okay, kindly prepare your notebook there and then a pen so let's have a quiz actually mas maganda yung pagkaka-explain ko kasi naintindihan naintindihan ba ninyo gamer anthony naintindihan mo ba garnica can you open your microphone can you unmute your microphone naintindihan ba sir gamay sir Gamay naman noon. Okay, so bantawin mo ang recordings pa ulit-ulit, ha? Yes, sir. Mayo. Okay, thank you. about Justin? Did you get it? Justin Cordero? May kanta yan, eh. Justin? Yes, sir. Yan. Hi, Justin. Yes, sir. Naintindihan no. ba? Yes, sir. Konti lang, sir. Okay. <laughs> Konti. Panoorin ha, panoorin lang. Okay, so that is our discussion. Okay, let's proceed now. How about Ma'am Job? Did you get Ma'am Job? Ma'am Job ata para matulad. Nakuha? Hindi ko marinig si Ma'am Job. Ayun. Si Dindo? Dindo, nakuha ba? Dindo. 
Okay, yan. So, let's have a quiz. Ulitin ninyo ha, pag hindi ninyo maintindihan. Cordero ng Diyos. Ah, okay. Cordero ng Diyos pala yun. Na naghahati ng mga kasalanan sa mundo. Ah, ganun pala yun. <laughs> It's ko na. <laughs> Yung kapalito mo. Cordero kayo. Kanta pala yun sa ano, katawalit. Cordero ng Diyos na naghahati ng mga kasalanan sa mundo. Maawa ka sa amin. Ayan. Hopefully naintindihan ni Eric.
So, pwede kong pabalik kasi number 18. Okay na po, sir. Thank you.
All right, let's check your answers. And so let's check your answers, okay? Okay, number one, let's start with number one. Okay, it says here that the price elasticity of demand for a good will tend to be more elastic if. Okay, maging elastic ang isang demand ng isang, uh, you know, uh, the price elasticity of demand of, of a certain good will elastic if. Letter A. So, pagsalad mong elastic that is being, that is uh, greater than 1, no? That is uh, greater than 1. Okay, or uh, iba din perfectly. Pag sinabi mong perfectly, that is infinite, right? Okay. So we have here the good is broadly defined. We have like the demand for food as opposed to the demand for carrots. Letter B, the good has relatively few substitutes. Okay, next we have... Letter C, a long period of time is required to fully adjust to a price change in the good. Letter D, none of them are true. So what do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer here is letter D. It's none of the above are true. Okay? Wala naman sa mga choices ang tama. Okay? Kasi ang stated kasi sa question is, uh, for a good, uh, price elasticity of demand for a good will tend to be more elastic. To be more elastic so that is being uh, greater than one. Okay? So, wala namang sinabi dyan. Okay? We have number two. If a good is inferior, may pag na natin. If the good is inferior, that is being what? Negative or positive? What do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer is that is being negative. Correct. Because it is inferior goods. Okay. The income elasticity is of the demand will be negative. Okay. Because that is inferior good. So necessary good that is being what? A necessary good that is Pag necessary good, ano ang necessary good? What type of income elasticity of demand? Pag, in, pag necessary good. What? That is being? Zero. Okay? Pag luxury goods naman, that is being? Positive. Okay? Number three, if two goods are complements, okay, pag sinabi mong complements, automatic pag-uusapan ay negative okay the cross price elasticity of the mind will be negative pag sinabi mo namang zero the cross price elasticity is non related non hindi sila related the goods okay pag sinabi mo namang positive cross price elasticity that is being substitute okay Number four, the cross price elasticity of demand between two differentiated goods produced by firms firms in the in the same industry will be. So the cross price elasticity of demand between two differentiated goods, hindi magkaparehas, no? Nagkaroon ng differentiated goods. Pag it's either substitute goods, okay, or yeah. So the two, two differentiated or uh, it's either... Uh, yeah, tama. Pag sinabi mong between two differentiated goods, magkaiba ang kanilang forma, magkaiba ang, ang goods na yan, pero they are in the same manner, in, in the same, let's say, hindi siya mabuo kung wala siyang ganito. Ganyan. So, the correct answer there is, pag sinabing between two differentiated goods, that is being in the same industry, that is being positive. So, what do you mean by that goods? That is a substitute goods. Okay, so that is positive and large. Okay. Number 55. If the price elasticity of the mind for a firm's output is elastic, again, then the firm's marginal revenue is 
blank. Okay, pinag-uusapan yung marginal revenue ng kumpanya, ng firm. So, the correct answer here is letter B. It is positive. No, the price elasticity is positive. And an increase in price will cause the total revenue to decrease. Bakit? Diba? As the law of demand is when the price is increasing, the quantity demanded is decreasing. Meaning, the total revenue is also decreasing. Okay? So, that is letter B. Number six, the elasticity for the demand of durable goods. Okay, what is durable goods? Those goods that are tangible goods. No, yung mga goods na tawag dyan, uh, hindi basta-basta nasisira. Okay, so we talk about durable goods that is greater than unity. Okay, so that is greater than one. Okay, so that is greater than unity or greater than one. Okay, so that is elasticity of your demand is greater than one. It is relatively, uh, re relatively sensitive. Okay, to the, ano, yun, elasticity. That is relatively elastic. Yun. Number seven, if the quantity demanded of a commodity is unresponsive, or unresponsive meaning being insensitive, Okay, to change in prices, then the demand of that commodity is, pag sinabi mo, insensitive, okay? So that is being, correct answer here, is perfectly inelastic, okay? If the quality demanded of quality is, in, is unresponsive to change in price, when the, bakit siya unresponsive? If you're going to make a graph right here, unresponsive, nagkaroon ng change in the price, pero ang demand niya is, kung yung demand is unresponsive, that is being um a horizontal, uh, sorry, vertical, sorry, vertical line. So that is perfectly inelastic. Okay? Number eight, when the price of a product falls, Okay, by 10% and its demand rises by 30%. Then the elasticity of demand is, so how to how are you going to compute for this? Then this is 30, okay, divided by 10, and that will give you 3. Okay, the correct answer is 3%. Okay. Number nine, when elasticity of demand for commodity is very low, okay, mababa, ang elasticity ng isang commodity, very low, it shows that the product is blank. Okay, pag uh, mababa no, ang demand ng isang commodity, okay, what do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer, it is a necessity. Okay, when the demand is very low, that is necessity. See, ang luxury that is being increased, right? And then has little importance in the total budget, not related. Okay, so the correct answer is letter C. Number 10, when the demand for a product is perfectly inelastic. So, pag sinabi mo perfectly inelastic, so that is ganito, okay? There is no change in the quantity demanded uh when there is a, a changes in the price okay so a price increases will result in there's no change in the a decrease in the quantity demanded of product wrong we have number two letter b no change in the total um sorry no change in in the total income from a product my changes yun doon kasi nagkaroon ng increase right so wrong an increase in the total income from a product, bucket, meron price increase. Okay, so walang, walang nangyayari, walang changes in the quantity demand because this is perfectly inelastic. So yun pa rin yung quantity demand. Yung price lang yung nag, ano, so that is correct. A reduction in the total income, increase yung pinag-usapan na price. So pag income dapat mata. It's wrong. The correct answer is letter C. Okay. Number 11, in case the price of a product, yeah, price of a product and the total revenue from the product move in the same direction. So magkapares daw in the same direction. Then the demand is, pag sinabi mong the same, automatic, that is 
Pag sinabing the same, automatic that is being in elastic. Okay, sabi dito, in, in case the price of a product, okay, price of the product and the total revenue. Ay. Okay, sandali lang ha. Okay, going back. I am sorry. Okay. So the correct answer there is in elastic. Sir, bakit in elastic? Kasi nga, di ba pinag-usapan natin, no? Ang, ang tanong kasi dito ay sabi niya, price of a product and the total revenue. So hindi pinag-usapan yung quantity demand. No, hindi pinag-usapan. Ang pinag-usapan lang dito yung price of a product and the total revenue. Okay, from that product, move in the same direction. So ano ba yung elast in elastic? Okay, so the inelastic is move in the same direction. Okay, so that is lesser than one. Okay, that is lesser than one. So saan ba yung lesser than one? Okay, so if you are inelastic, so when the price is increasing, so the total revenue is also increasing. No, so because mas mataas ang price percentage kesa sa uh, kesa sa, sa demand, okay? Sa quantity demand. Okay, mas mataa, ma mababa yung percentage ng quantity demand. That is being in elastic. Or being insensitive, insensitive, gano'n, insensitive sa, sa ano, sa change of price. Okay? So number 12, elasticity is the measurement of letter A, it is responsiveness. So another term for elasticity is responsiveness. Okay? Number 13, the arc elasticity is a measure of two point that is being average elasticity. Yung sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, that is average elasticity. Number 14, an inelastic good or service is what in which changes in price witness blank changes in the quantity demanded or supplied. So an elastic good or services is one in which changes in price witness blank changes in the quantity demanded of or supplied. No? Pag sinabi mong inelastic, that is being what? Kasi yung inelastic, that is being insensitive, right? So that is being insensitive. So it means that the, the flow, the flow of the change in the quantity supplied or the curve is being only modest. No? Ibig sabihin smooth yung kanyang flow ng prices witness, ng changes niya. Okay, so that is being modest. Pero pag elastic good yan, that is being sharp. Okay, that is being sharp, that is being sharp pag elastic good. Okay, next we have number 15. All such demand curves were quantity demanded. Okay, is totally unresponsive to change in prices are called. So, hindi daw, quantity demanded is totally unresponsive. So, ibig sabihin si quantity demanded ay hindi nag-response kahit magtaas pa o papaba ang prices. So, that is being perfectly inelastic. So, that is being insensitive. Okay? That is perfectly inelastic. Okay? Next, number 16. Such horizontal demand curves, o, oh, ito na agad, no? Pinag-usapan horizontal. Ito na yung word na bibigay sa'yo ng, ng link, no? Uh, where quantity demanded is infinitely responses, that is being, letter A, perfectly elastic demand curve, no? Ito yun. Ganyan yung kanyang forma. 
Okay? Next, number 17. The blank have a property that when price decreases, no, the total revenue increases and vice versa. So what do you think is the correct answer? Pag tumaas daw ang price, ay tataas din ang total revenue. Okay, there's a total revenue which is also increases. So what do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer here is letter A. Okay, that is being perfectly elastic demand curve. Okay, so the price, sorry, the price is decreases, sorry, the price is decreases. When the price is decreases, the total revenue is increases. Okay, that is being perfectly elastic demand curve. Alam nyo kung bakit ganyan yan? When the price is decreases, so walang, uh, walang nangyayari doon sa quantity demanded. So pag bababa pa yung price, no, mas malalang magkakaroon ng ano, madaming bibili. Okay? So we have number 18, the elasticity coefficient. And coefficient for perfectly elastic demand curve is what? What is the coefficient of perfect, perfectly elastic demand? Okay, the coefficient for a perfectly elastic demand curve is infinity. Correct. It's infinity. Next, number 19, demand curve is said to be blank. Okay, and has the property that, that when the price increases or decreases, the total revenue remains constant. Ibig sabihin, yun lang pa rin yung kanyang total. Ibig sabihin, walang nangyayaring uh, changes in the total revenue. So that is being, okay, that is being, the correct answer here is unitary elastic. Okay, that is being unitary elastic. Okay, next. Number 20, the elasticity coefficient for unitary demand curves is equal to, okay, the elasticity of unitary, okay, unitary demand curve, what is the coefficient? It is 1, equal to 1, okay? Number 21, demand curves which have an elasticity coefficient blank are called a relatively inelastic or simply inelastic. So that it, that is... That is uh, less than less than one. Okay, that is less than one. So what is the correct answer here? So we have here um zero and between zero one. So the correct answer here is letter C. Okay, between zero and one. Number twenty-two. The elasticity coefficient for a relatively elastic or simply elastic demand curve is blank. Okay, elasticity coefficient for relatively elastic, that is greater than 1 or infinite. Okay, so that is the correct answer is letter. Correct, it's letter D. Okay, that's letter D. Number 23, a luxury goods tends to have an what? Lux, luxury good. Luxury good is tends to have a... What? When the price is increased, okay, it tends to be elastic demand. So it tends to be elastic demands, okay? We have number 24, the cross elasticity of demand is a numerical measures of the degree to which quantity demanded of a good response to changes in the blank so the other determinants of demand being kept constant. So what do you call that cross elasticity? It is by the responsive of, okay, the correct answer here is prices of other commodities. Ito yung pinag-usapan natin, yung other related goods. Yung sub, pag, pag cross elasticity, ilagay na sa isipan agad natin yung other related goods, yung uh, Complementary at saka substitute goods. Ayan. Number 25, an understanding of elasticity is fundamental in understanding the blank in the market. So what do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer for this question is 
letter C, talk about the response of supply and the demand. Okay, so who got perfect? Class, who got perfect? Kindly put your scores sa ating chat box. Count the number of your correct and then put your scores now sa ating chat box. Okay, Darlene got 15, Jov got 18, Eric got 15, Justin got 14, Edena got 14, a uh, 17, okay. Maria got 15 and we have Jessa got 14 and Gamer got 13. Okay, so what is the passing score for 25 that is 25 that is 15 the passing score is 15 so we have okay maria alessa got maria eloisa okay got the correct uh past the quiz we have edena past the quiz eric pass it 15 job pass it and then darling so yung iba na hindi naka ano nakaabot sa 15 you have justine we have Jessa at saka si Gamer. Panoorin yung ulit yung recording. Sa saka yung sa iba din kahit na umabot kayo ng 15, you need to uh, ano, to listen uh, to go back and listen the recordings, okay? So let's proceed now to our next discussion and that is elasticity of supply. So don't worry guys kasi konti lang to, konti lang talaga to. Okay? So we have here we talk about the law of supply. Parang ganun lang din siya sa elasticity elasticity of demand. However, ang pinag-uusapan dito yung law of supply. Ano yung law of supply? Diba? When the price is increasing, the quantity supply is also increasing. Okay? So, in a free market, the producers compete with each other for profits. Anong kinakompete nila? Ang mga seller, it is for the profits. Since the profits are never constant across time or across different goods, okay, entrepreneurs shift resources and labor efforts towards those goods that are more profitable and away from goods that are less profitable. So this causes an increase in the supply of highly valued goods and a decrease in supply for less value goods. Okay, so economists refer to the tendency for price and the quantity supplied. Ano pinag price and quantity supplied to be related in the law of supply, okay? So to illustrate, it is supposed that consumers begin demanding more oranges and fewer apples. So mas madaming gustong bumili ng orange kasi sa apple. There are more dollars bidding for oranges and fewer for apples. Bakit? Kasi mas demand man yung oranges kasi sa apple which causes orange prices to rise. So, tataas ang presyo ng, ng orange kasi nga demand siya. And the apple prices will drop. Okay? So, the producers of food seeing the shift in the demand. So, yung mga producers ng food seeing, na, seeing that the shift of the demand of the orange is higher. So, decided to grow more orange. Okay? More orange and fewer apples because it can result in the higher profits. Okay, so wag kang, wag kang, ano, wag kang magtatanim ng putas na hindi naman siya season na magbuboom siya. Okay? So we have here price elasticity of supply. So it measures the responsiveness yeah, to, to the supply of a good or service after a change in its market price. Okay? According to basic economic theory, the supply of good will increase when its prices increases. Okay? Conversely, the supply of a good will decrease. Bababa lang siya kung ang presyo ay bababa din. Okay? So there's also a price elasticity of demand. Di pinag-usapan natin. Okay? So we already done with that. So let's focus now to the price uh, ano, uh, supply. Okay? So, yeah. So, price elasticity of supply is equals to 
percent change in supply divided by percent change in price. Okay. The price elasticity of supply, there are five types of price elasticity of supply in Perrin. Perfectly elastic supply, uh, uh, perfectly and relatively inelastic supply, and then unit elastic supply, perfectly and relatively elastic supply. So here are examples of five price elastic of supply curves. So this one is what we call, yung kanina pababa, uh, ano yun, di ba? Ang perfectly, yan na natin ha? This is an example of an elastic supply. This one. So this is an elastic supply. Okay, sabi doon sa an elastic supply. Ito pataas ng pataas ang presyo ha? Pataas ang presyo niyan. Increase in the price. Okay? So perfectly in elastic supply is when the PES formula is equals to zero. So the, the, uh, uh, Elastic, no? uh, sorry, elasticity of uh, supply, okay, Perf to, uh, uh, sorry, price, sorry, price, uh, supply, price, elasticity of supply, correct, yan, is equals to zero, okay, ibig sabihin, walang nagagalaw doon sa quantity supply, okay, kung kanina, ang pinag-usapan natin ang price at saka quantity demanded, right, quantity demand. So ganun din walang walang nagalaw sorry walang nagalaw sa shifting ng quantity demand kahit bumaba pa lang bumaba ang presyo here ang pinag-uusapan is tumaas nang tumaas ang presyo so wala pa ring nangyayari doon sa quantity supply ganun pa rin kadami ang isusupply niya okay Next, you have relatively inelastic okay and ibig ng relatively inelastic as what I have said earlier Ganon din sa, sa, tawag doon, sa demand, okay? It is uh, the price elasticity of supply for relatively inelastic is lesser than 1. Bakit lesser than 1? That is being insensitive, okay? That is being insensitive, okay? So that is what we call a, uh, this is uh, the graph for it, okay? That is being insensitive. Ibig sabihin, tumaas ang presyo, okay, tumaas ang presyo ng ilang percentage, like so, that means the percentage change in the quantity supply changes by a lower percentage than the percentage of price change. Ano ibig sabihin yan? No? Tumaas yung price. No? There is a percentage, no? Uh, tumaas yung percentage ng price, let's say, 5 percent ang tinaas ng presyo pero yung quantity supply ay konti lang ang itinaas. So, konti lang din yung sinupply ng mga supply producers. So, mga 2 percent lang din. So, mas mataas pa rin ang price kesa sa quantity supply. Karang ka na din, tulad din kanina sa demand. Okay? Ganon din sa elasticity of demand. So, that is relatively in elastic. Okay? Pag sinabi mo namang unit plastic, that meaning equal. No, there be unit elasticity supply has a a uh, price elasticity supply of one, where quantity supply changes by the same percentage as the price change. No, magparas na din sila. If to maas ang price ng fifty percent, no, yung quantity supply din ay tataas na ng fifty percent. So magkaparas sila. So that is unitary, meaning the the price elasticity of supply is equals to one. Okay. Next, relatively elastic supply. Ano yung relatively elastic supply? Meaning, it has, uh, it's being sensitive to a price given. Kahit sa konting ano lang, kahit sa konting changes ng maliit na price, uh, sa percentage ng price, kahit let's say, ang price nag-increase siya ng, ang price nag-increase siya ng, uh, let's say, 2%, no? Nag-increase siya ng 2%. No? Yung quantity supply ngayon ay mag-change siya, mag increase siya into 5%. Ibig sabihin, mas mataas pa rin yung isusupply mo kahit sa, sa maliit na, kahit sa maliit na ano, kahit sa maliit na, tawag dyan, kahit sa maliit na ano, <laughs> kahit sa maliit na change ng price. Okay, so that is being greater than 1. So the elasticity here, the price elasticity of supply is equals to, uh, sorry, the elastic, price elasticity of supply is greater than, greater than 1. Okay. 
perfectly elastic supply. It is perfectly elastic supply, but it is it is infinite. No, the the perf the price of the elasticity of supply is infinite. Okay, it is infinite. Why? Walang katapos ang supply supply na yan kahit ganun lang din ang presyo niya. Okay? So we have the PS, okay, the price elasticity of supply for example, where the so quantity supply is unlimited, no? Nagkaroon ng unlimited ng quantity supply in a given price. No, in a given price, mar marami siyang i ano ipo-provide na supply. But no quantity can be supplied at any other price. Kasi pag mag-iba yung price, so there is, di na siya perfectly elastic supply. Okay? There are, there are virtually no real life. Okay? Examples of this, where even a small change in the price would, this would, actually, walang, hindi nangyayari ito sa real life talaga. Kasi wala namang ganyan eh. Hindi naman, uh, in the same, uh, in the same manner, like, in a given price, ganun pa rin yung quantity supplied mo, kadami. So wala namang nangyayari. Parang feeling ko, parang, at the end, para malulugi siya. Parang, though it's infinite, no? parang naglulugi siya. Kasi as the days go by, di ba tumataas ang presyo ng mga raw materials. So, ayun. So, it's, it's not talaga nangyari sa reality. Okay? So, that is elasticity of uh, price, elasticity of supply, or elasticity, elasticity of supply. Okay? Pag-uusapan na natin yung price, elasticity of supply. Pero yung income, di na na pag-uusapan yun because its income is under determinants of demand. Ayan. So, are you ready? <laughs> so, hopefully you understand. Parang ano lang din siya, demand lang. However, yung yung lows lang talaga ang sundin ninyo. Which is, if the price is increasing, the quantity supply is also increasing. Ganon. Ina-apply nyo lang yung law of demand and law of supply na pinag-usapan natin nung nakaraan. Uha? Okay, let's have a quiz.
Okay, let's check your answers. Ayan, so, sino yung mga tapos dyan? If you are done, kindly raise your hand if you are done. Very good, Justin, that's done, Darlene, ayan. So, ayan, so, oh, this is our last discussion. Okay, so this is uh, elasticity of supply. So, di ba madali lang? Kasi hindi naman siya masyadong mataas, like sa demand talaga. Okay, so, uh, Ayan, so let's answer your, uh, answer, let's check your answers. Okay, the question here is that if the, if the elasticity supply of supply is greater than one, so the supply curve would be black. No, pag greater than one, pag usapan na natin. No, pag ganyan, so that is greater than one. Okay, so pag greater than one, ano ang forma ng yung, uh, Pag greater than 1, ano ang forma ng iyong uh, supply? Okay, pag greater than 1. And that is, okay, touching Y axis. Okay, so that being, sorry, yan, that is being, oh, sorry, that is being, um, what we call, greater than 1, that is touching Y axis. Bakit touching Y axis if it is greater than 1? Okay, dali. It is touching y-axis, okay? So this is the y-axis here, and this is the x-axis, okay? So we have here the supply curve would be touching y-axis. Ganon patas. Okay, so that is letter A. Okay, next we have number two. In May 2019, a firm was providing 5,000 kilogram of sugar at the market price of... 30 per uh, 30 pesos per kilogram and then but uh but in june 20, 2019, 2019 their supply of sugar decreased to 4500 kilogram at a market price of 20 uh, per pesos per kilogram this change sh shows that the supply of sugar is so in may 2019 okay is 5000 kilogram ng sugar ang nasusupply nila in 30 pesos per kilogram. So, nung pagka June, okay, 4,000 bumaba ang supply ng kanilang uh, sugar no at the price of 20 pesos. So, this is an example of what? Example of, the correct answer is less elastic okay this is an example of less elastic okay next number three if a price changes by one percent and a supply changes by two percent it means that mas mataas yung supply kasi sa price or that is being sensitive okay that is being sensitive then automatic that is letter d okay that is being sensitive to uh, 1% or to a little amount of price changes, supply is being sensitive. Okay? Kasi nga, mas mataas ang supply kaysa sa price. Okay? Next is number four. The percentage change in quantity supply due to the percentage in price is called. Okay? Percentage change in the quantity supply due to the price percentage in price is what we call elasticity of supply. Okay, this is elasticity of supply. Number five, elasticity of supply refers to the responsiveness of quantity supplied to changes in its, okay, ano yung nag change? To changes in its, the correct answer here is letter, okay, the correct answer here is letter A, no? Elasticity of supply refers to responsiveness of quantity supplied to change in its, okay, responsiveness to change in its demand, okay? There is a change in the demand in the elasticity of supplies, okay? Number six, bakit yun siya demand ang sagot? Diba pag nagtaas yung demand, nagtataas din yung supply, Okay? Number six, when when supply curve is vertical straight line. So vertical straight line, ganyan. So we have the vertical straight line. Ganyan. Okay. 
Ah, uh, yes. Sir, paulit mo ng ano, 2 hanggang 5 po. Nawala po kasi yung internet kanina. <laughs> like Number 2. Yan. Correct answer is letter B. 3 na po, sir. Okay. And then number 3, it's letter D. Elastic. Number 4 is letter C. Elasticity of supply. Okay. Number 5 is demand. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Number six, when supply curve is vertical straight line, it indicates supply, blank supply. So, ano yan? Yung ganyan. That is being insensitive, meaning it's being insensitive. The, right? the, the, the supply is being insensitive. So, that is what you call, sorry, is that vertical line? Tama ba vertical or horizontal? Horizontal pala yan. That is horizontal line. <laughs> sorry. That is horizontal line pala yan. Change ko muna. My God, yeah, that's horizontal line. Sorry, that's horizontal line. So we talk about the vertical line. This is the vertical line. So the correct answer is being, this is being infinite. Okay, so this is letter B, perfectly elastic. Okay, this is perfectly elastic. Okay, this is a vertical line. Okay, horizontal pala yung pag -anong. Okay? Kasi inaalala ko kasi yung soil profile na horizontal. Pag anon, oh. <laughs> Next, we have letter number seven. A straight line supply curve passing through a region forming 50 degree indicates. Oh, yeah. So, ano 50 degree yan? So, this is 45, right? So, this is 50 degree. Okay. So, 50 degree. So, what type of elasticity yan ng supply? That is greater than one. Okay. That is elasticity of uh, that is elastic okay relatively elastic supply okay next we have number eight okay elasticity of supply for a positively slope supply curve that starts from price axis let's like, simula siya doon sa price axis okay that is what that is an example of letter B, greater than 1. It's greater than 1. Okay, next. Number 9. In case of perfectly elastic supply, the supply is what? It is vertical. No, it is vertical. Number 9, the correct answer is vertical. Okay, number 10. Supply is relatively elastic in what? Supply is relatively elastic in the correct answer is letter D. Short period and long period of time. Okay? Number 11. When supply curve is parallel to x-axis, ibig sabihin sa x-axis parallel siya, elasticity of supply is, that is, what? That is being negative. Okay, that is being negative. The correct answer is negative. Okay, next. If the coefficient of elasticity of supply is 0 0.6, meaning it's less than 1, Okay, so the supply is blank. Okay, so what's this? This is, the correct answer is letter, what? This is letter, the 0 0.6, that is under less than 1, and that is being in elastic. Okay, that is being in elastic. Okay. We have number 13, when upward sloping straight line curve shoots up from quantity axis, it implies, okay, sl upward sloping straight line, so like, ano siya doon sa kinatawag natin, a line curve shoots siya doon sa from quantity axis, doon sa quantity supply mismo. Ibig sabihin, pag sinabi mong curve shoots, straight line talaga siya, ibig sabihin that is equal to zero. Okay, the quantity supply is equal to zero. Parang ganito, oh. 
ganyan. Ganyan. So, may specific lang siya. Dito yung, yung kanyang shoots niya sa uh, quantity axis. Okay? This equals to zero. So that, be, that is being perfectly in elastic. Okay? Number 14, elasticity of supply for a positively slope supply that shoots from origin. So, from this one is the origin, right? Dito, from origin. So, that is what we call is equals to 1. That is letter C. Okay? Next, number 15, the supply of perishable goods is. Ano yung mga perishable goods? Yung goods na madaling masira. Okay? So, what is the supply of perishable goods? It is relatively elastic. Okay? The correct answer is relatively elastic. It is greater than 1. Okay? So, kindly check your answers. Okay, and then count the number of your correct and then put your scores in the chat box. So, all right, that's our discussion for tonight. Okay, so that is elasticity. Hopefully, you guys have already an idea. If you cannot understand our discussion tonight, so kindly uh, um, listen, go back and listen uh, ng paulit-ulit ang discussion na ito. Okay? Put, please put in your mind if you're going to ano, if you're going to listen again put your mind in the, the basic principles or the law of demand and the law of supply when the price is falling when the price is rising what happened to the quantity demand and the quantity supplied and that is applied to elasticity okay when because it talks about the sensitivity of, and sensitivity and insensitivity when there is a changes in the price okay let me see your scores Okay, then I got, yes, Justine, do you have any question? Yes, consider them, sir, sa vertical at saka horizontal po. Hmm. Yung pagka, alam ko din po kasi yung vertical from top to bottom. Kasi, ano eh, ilan na ilan pa din ako, ano vertical? Vertical supply yun, no, sorry. Air po. Yes, you passed. Okay, sabi ko. Oh my God, that's what's happening to me. From top to bottom niya talaga. And then the horizontal is like yung parang straight line. That is being infinite. Oh, wait a minute. Check ko ha. Supply, 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 vertical supply. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the vertical supply is something like this. This is a straight line. Sumali sa yung ano, yung correct answers na nilagay ko doon. Sandali. Anong number yun? Palet number. Number... Which one number? Nine? Number nine ba? Twelve ata, sir. Sorry, number nine, the correct answer for number nine is letter D. Okay, so perfectly elastic supply, the, the curve of the, the supply curve there is horizontal. Yun, horizontal pala yun. That's the correct answer, it's letter D. Number nine is letter D. The correct answer is letter D.
Number nine nga yun. That is letter D. Excuse, sir. So, number six po, sir. Ano yung po yung correct answer dun, sir? Number? Six po. Number six. That is, pag vertical, sorry, pag vertical, that is, uh, tama na. So, I have here, pag vertical, is perfectly, In oh, so let's turn it. Yes, we have here. So, yung manual ko. Yan. <laughs> Wait lang. Vertical, vertical, vertical. Okay, that is being perfectly inelastic. That is perfectly inelastic. Ano kasi sinagot ko dito? Ah, it's letter C. Number six is letter C. Sorry. Number six is letter C. That is perfectly inelastic. So, yung perfectly inelastic is vertical so yung perfectly elastic supply that is horizontal ayan mm -mm. sige nga i-check natin ulit yung scores ninyo Darlene do you have any question you raise your hand <laughs> Ito tayo po, sana napindot lang. <laughs> okay, sige pa. Thank you. Meron pa bang clarification doon? Kasi kahit ako nag-explain, parang hindi naman tama yung pag ano. Sige lang. So, Eric got 10. So, si Justine got 10. How about the others? Darlene got 9. Okay, that's good. The passing score is 7. Adena got 9. Gamer. How about si Gamer? Gamer. Jov got 11. That's good. Gamer got 8. Jessa got 9. Okay, so it means that you understand. Parang si Sir lang ata hindi naintindihan yun. Kasi <laughs> gugulan ako. Kaya actually hindi ko talaga siya, ano, hindi ako nagbabasa talaga ng, ano, ng elasticity of supply. Kasi yun lang naman yung kasi pag-aaralan lang, parang supply of them, parang elasticity of demand lang din siya. Okay, so this this class is recorded, ha? So you can access this one anytime. So by tomorrow pa to siya, pwede ninyong i-access. Again, thank you very much, guys, for listening.